Everyone, welcome to Go Midwest Fishing. My name's Randy. Today is Friday, May 3rd. It's a beautiful day out. Tomorrow, Saturday, is going to be 70 and sunny and even nicer than today. So it's time to get the boat out, unwinterize it, and I figure while I'm doing that, I'll just show you my routine get, for getting my boat ready for the water. All right, first thing we do is clear out all this junk so we can get the boat out of here and take off the cover. You see I got the, uh, this is for my camper over here. You'll see that video coming up. We're in the middle of a restoration for my pop-up camper. And the robins have been in here building nests and creating a big mess. So, ugh, bird poop everywhere. So I gotta clean that off first. Here's what it looks like after being stored all winter. I do give it a thorough cleaning before I put it away, so generally clean when I pull it out in the summer. I do use it for storing a couple things. Get these chairs out of here. Clean those out and then I'll bring her to my shop and get her put together. Okay, the number one rule to fishing before you even hook up your boat is you make sure you have a plentiful supply of Twizzlers. As you can see, I'm sporting a five pound package back here, so I'm ready to go. All right, I'm driving a 2004 Dodge Ram. Doesn't have any of those fancy backup cameras in it, so I gotta do it the old fashioned way. Just back up to her and see if I hit the hitch. All right, first thing I'm gonna do, I hooked up the lights to the truck, turn them on, make sure they're, they're all working. So let me know if they're working, okay? All right, here's a handy little tip. If you ever buy a new trailer or even your existing one, switch out the lights to LEDs. These have been working since I put them on. With the old fashioned bulbs, they'd burn out every year. I was constantly replacing them. It was just a big hassle. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is make sure the, the wheel bearings got plenty of grease. I got the bearing buddies on here, which I highly recommend. If you're not familiar with what a bearing buddy is, uh, generally you just got the, the cap that goes over your hub here. It just replaces that, and it's a, basically a spring-loaded cap. So once I push some grease into here, that spring pushes out and gives a positive pressure inside the hub. So when you put your wheels under water, there's a, a higher pressure inside the hub and it doesn't let water leak in. It, instead it tries to push it out. So put enough uh, grease in there, you see the spring start to compress. The way you know it's got some positive pressure in there. I bought this boat a few years ago and I took the hubs off. I packed them with grease again. Uh, but it's been a few years, so I think this year I might just pull the whole hub off, put brand new hubs on or new bearings. Uh, that way I know I'm good if I go on long trips. I don't have to worry about them blowing out on me. And it's just got this protective little cap on it that keeps the dust out. All right, while you're down here, now is a good time to check the tire pressure. Got 36 pounds on here. It's a little low. These tires run at 50 PSI. If I am generally Trailer tires run a little higher, like 50 to 65 PSI, compared to passenger cars. Um, these are uh, bias ply, I believe. You can get radials or bias ply. Um, the bias ones usually have a little bit thicker side walls. You can hold a little more weight, but the radials last a little longer. And don't forget to check the tire pressure on your spare tire at this time. All right, now we're going inside the boat. Uh, last fall I did a nice cleaning of it so it's pretty good to go. I don't really have to vacuum it right now. But I do take out all the batteries and electronics and keep them in a warm place for the winter. So now I'm just installing the batteries. I got two, uh, two batteries for the front trolling motor. It's a 24 volt encoded Tarova. So it goes in this little pocket back here. And then I got one in the back I'll show you in a minute. So here's the hole where they both go. It's a tight squeeze but it fits perfectly in there. Just gotta pull out all the wires so it doesn't get in the way. I 
got the uh, Interstate Deep Cycle Marine. Uh, I got the biggest ones I could find at Cabela's that would fit in my boat, so it gives me plenty of power. They're heavy buggers. First one goes good, second one. Alright, I got the batteries in all wired up and uh, just show you quickly how I did it. I put the uh, terminal ends here end to end. So it goes positive, negative, then jumpers over to the next the positive and to a negative. That way it gives it 24 volts for the trolling motor. So I got the lead here and here to the trolling motor. You see it's got a, a circuit breaker on there. And then 12 volts, I got green and red going up to the front for a light and stuff. So I got that just hooked to this battery for 12 volts. And then right here, I got a three bank battery charger in this compartment. Wires running through right here. So each one of those connects to a battery separately. So positive, negative on each battery. So it charges them at 12 volts each. And then the third one goes to the back. Right back there for my starting battery, which will hook up next. All right, now we're in the back of the boat. Here's my compartment for my battery. It goes right in there. Um, here's the battery I got. It's uh, a marine dual purpose, so it can use for starting and deep cycle, because I use it to start my motor, and I also use it to run all my electrical equipment. So other than starting, I have two fish finders and. I have my GoPro cameras and all my other cameras. I keep charging the batteries on it while I'm on the water so I never run out of power. And it does put a little bit of drain on the battery. So I got the biggest one I could find. All right, this battery, it says it's got a uh, group size 31 and around 215 minutes at 23 amps. So it's a pretty decent sized battery. Uh, I had, before this, I had two batteries hooked up in parallel. Give me a little extra boost and then those batteries died so I just ended up with this single battery. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than the other ones. I'll see how it does uh, if I notice I'm running out of power on the lake like when I'm out there all day long then I'll add a second battery to that again this year. <laughs> so right here below the windshield I got a little pocket with uh, all the wires. So right here it's a nice little fuse box I got it all labeled. Each one has its own fuse, its own wire. Here I got a 12 volt outlet. That's where I was charging my GoPro. Just keeping it in here, it's keeping it nice and dry. So other things I keep in this little pouch here is I got uh, a bag of spare fuses. I got some electrical tape. Got my trolling motor remote. And manual how to use the trolling motor. Extra baggy for whatever. So that's what I keep in there is my spares. On the side of the steering console, I also wired up two extra 12 volt outlets. To power things like uh, if you want to charge your phones or whatever you want. Uh, here's my little GoPro tripod. I keep it uh, velcroed right to the side here on a tripod. I can raise it up, twist it around, and I can also just plug it in right there and keep the GoPro charged too as I'm fishing. All right, let's hook up some electronics for the front. I have a Humminbird Fish Finder 525. It's an old school, it's uh, the first one I bought and it's black and white, but it works good for the front uh, trolling motor just to see how deep it is and see where the bottom is. And for me, I use it for ice fishing too. So time to take it out of its little bag. I made a little homemade bag for it with battery and everything so I can use it on the ice. But now it's time to transition to summer. So just pop it off of here and put it onto here. There, it's ready to go. All right, so the fish finder I use up here is the Humminbird 598. It's got down imaging and side imaging. And at the time it was basically the cheapest one you could get that also had side imaging. It was, uh, I don't know what I bought it for, two or three hundred dollars, wasn't too bad. But I really like it. It's got GPS moving maps. I got the Navionics uh, chip in there. 
and I really like the side scan and all that, but I didn't have to splurge, you know, a couple thousand to get the big widescreen uh, Helix or any of those. So it's been working for me. I like it. So I'm going to stay with this one for now. Now that I got the batteries hooked up, I'm just going to test everything. Nav lights turn on, interior lights work, bilge. Yep, I hear that. Live well, that all works. Let's see if this turns on. Yep, fish finder turns on. So electrical seems to be working good. I got that all set up for ice fishing, so when I get on the water, I'll have to play with the menus and get it back to a uh, normal fishing mode. And I'll just pop this one right on the front. There it is. Easy enough. All right, if I'm going to have a problem, it's going to be right here. Every year I seem to have a little problem with the connections on this thing. I got an electric winch because this boat is a heavy beast. And I go to a lot of lakes and it's uh, so much easier just having an electric winch pull it in. So let's hook it up and see if it actually works. <laughs> nope. Well, it's usually just this connection right here. Just got to scrape it out a little bit. See, there's a little bit of rust corrosion in there. All right, I cleaned off the contacts, plugged it back in. Let's try it. <coughs> ah, it works. Okay, now I'm gonna plug in the trolling motor and just make sure it actually runs. All right, foot pedal works just fine. I had to put the trolling motor full up, fully up for it to work. My old one used to work when it was laying on the thing, so. You can turn it on, turn it left and right. All right, that all works. So we're good there. Just need new batteries in the remote. Now just check over what gear I got in the boat. Should all be there from last year. And here I got a spotlight. You never know if you want to go water skiing. Got a tow rope. And then I got the essentials in here. You know, you never know when you need some of this. In here, let's see. Right, so here I got, got a bunch of sockets. I got three different ones. So these are things you never think about until it's too late. So say you got a flat tire and you need to use your spare. Well, you need you need to be able to get that spare off the holder. So I got a breaker bar here and the correct size socket to Pull the holder off there and then I got another size for the actual uh, lug nuts on the wheels so good there and then last but not least I got the electric winch on the front if that ever craps out like it seems to do every now and then you can manually uh, crank it in so I got put this one uh, 5 ace on the breaker bar and you can just spin it around by hand and wind the boat up so you're not stuck there so it's kind of my emergency bag right here Hopefully I'll never need to use that, but I have it on here in case we ever do. A couple rubber bands, you never know. And let's see over in the bin over here. So in this one, I got a, a bumper here I need to get a rope for. Let's see, a couple uh, flip-flops. You never know. Some paper towels, some shop towels actually. I got my rope to launch the boat with, my cable to hook up to the winch, uh, I got my nav lights in here and I started to stock one of these because twice now I've been stranded on the far side of the lake with uh, <laughs> no way to get back besides paddling with some boat cushions. So now I got a paddle in here to case uh, or trolling motor dies or main motor dies. It's actually happened three times. Third time I managed to get the motor started with a, a rope I had from the minnow bucket. I got it pull started. But uh, it's happened enough now. I got this just in case. All right, in my back compartment here. I got my other one because I couldn't fit it <laughs> two of them in that one bin. I got no a rope. Not sure why I have that in there. Got some two cycle engine oil in case we need to gas up on the road. 
Got the measuring up for it. Tie strap and funnel so we can pour the oil in without making a mess. Some stable marine version. A rope to pull start the engine if I ever need to do that again. And a bailing bucket. Uh, I got this item basically because in when you fish in Canada they require uh, certain equipment on your boat and this is part of that equipment. So I just keep it in here that way I always have it. I also have this little compartment here. This little handy compartment. I usually keep all my uh, hot spot fishing books in here and some this is my manual to my uh, Trova. And I got the fire extinguisher, some sunscreen, fish grabber, got a big old bobber. And this is where I also keep all my small little tackle boxes that I use for trout fishing and that kind of stuff. That way when I go trout fishing I just pull them out of here, throw them in a backpack and I'm good to go. So I gotta go get those out of the house. I always keep a cooler in the back of the boat. Gotta have uh, drinks and cold food, whatever you need. It's always there, ready to go. I got nets. Uh, it's my big musky net. And then I got just my regular little net here. Uh, I only keep the musky net in here when I, I'm actually thinking of catching bigger fish. And then my little rod locker on the side. I actually made this. At, it wasn't actually here when I bought the boat. Uh, it had a tackle box set right here, like a built-in one. So I got rid of that. You can see the different colored metal. And then I put in this door and made a place to store all my poles. You can see they're in there. So I'll have to go through all those poles, make sure the line's good and they're all ready to go. All right, next I'm just gonna pull the boat outside and we'll get the motor running. Uh, every winter when I winterize it, I pull out the spark plugs, fog it up, run it out of gas uh, so it's good for storage. So now I just gotta connect the gas back up to it. Uh, and this is a good time to put in new spark plugs, so I do that every year too. I just uh, don't happen to have any on me right now, so I'll be shopping tonight and get those, and then I'll have those in for tomorrow. All right, now we're gonna make sure the engine's running. So I did in the fall, I just fog these up so these are only hand tight. Uh, if you can see, if you can see there, they get they get pretty oily and gummed up. So it's a good idea to put new spark plugs in every year. I'll go grab some tonight, but for now I'm just gonna get it run in make sure it fires up. So I gotta re-tighten all these spark plugs up. Hook up the gas line. Looks like there's gas in it. And uh, got the hose all hooked up to it so we can run water through it when we're running. And let's see if it fires up. So I just noticed uh, last year when I put it away, I must have <laughs> labeled this one as a bad wire. A little connector in the center there must have fell out, broke off, whatever. So, I can't really run it until I get a new wire. So I guess I'm heading into town and looking for some parts. Well, I made it back from the store. Actually, I went to four different stores. Not a single one had spark plug wires, and only one of them actually carried the appropriate spark plugs. So, I got the spark plugs anyway, I'll put them in. Uh, the spark plug wires I had to order off Amazon. They'll be here in two days, so I guess uh, tomorrow I'll be fishing with a trolling motor. And I just want to emphasize, make sure you gap your spark plugs, get the little gapping tool, something like this. Uh, the 90 horse Evan Roods, this is an 88 special, but pretty much the same as a 90 horse. I guess there was some controversy. They were supposed to be originally gapped at 0 .04, but then they came out with a new manual in around 96 or something that said, no, gap them at 0 .03 now. So people are going back and forth what's better, but so I got them at 0 .03, we'll see if that works. If not, I'll open them up a little bit. And you see, there's the old one, there's the new one. Just snug, you don't want them too tight.
All right, the only thing left besides getting all my tackle and poles and stuff in there is just give it a nice wash, make it look good. All right, one last item I forgot to do earlier when I was greasing the wheel bearings is uh, there's a few Zerk fittings here on the motor that need to be greased also. So we'll get that done now. And yes, this is a pneumatic grease gun, just because I can. Alright guys, there you have it. There's my uh, unwinterizing routine. It's almost ready to go, just need to get those spark plug wires and then we're good. And tonight I'll get my tackle together and get it in the boat, put some new line on my poles. And if I didn't mention, uh, what we're working on here today was a 1991 Lumacraft competitor, 18 foot. It's got a 1995 Evernude 88 Special for the motor. And what I really like about this boat is it's got these really wide sides. I actually stand up there a lot when I'm fishing. I know I probably shouldn't all fall off one of these days. Um, it's nice and deep. I can go on some bigger lakes. I had on Lake Superior and like Mille Lac, stuff like that. And I've also put in some uh, pretty small lakes too and get around quite easily there too. So it's just the right size to be able to use it on any lake I want to. All right, I can't wait to get out and use it tomorrow. I hope this helped or was at least entertaining and I'll uh, see you in the lake soon.